American Werewolf in London was released in 1981. That is over 34 years ago, but this film is still incredibly important in the makeup industry because it revolutionized the use of practical effects. Rick Baker and his team created effects that had never been done before, including a complete human to werewolf transition in real time on screen using animatronics. There were no cutaways. This achievement earned Rick Baker the first ever Oscar for outstanding makeup effects. To pay a little tribute to this movie and to Rick's work, I wanted to recreate Jack's torn throat. So I hope you guys enjoy this first Halloween tutorial of 2015. The process of recreating this makeup began with me sculpting the torn throat, molding it, and then running it in gelatin. I will have videos on those processes coming up soon, and I decided to use gelatin this time because it's very inexpensive and it's very flesh-like in appearance. Before applying the prosthetic, I went ahead and pre-painted using alcohol colors. For the foundation of the wound, I used Blood, which is a color from the Skin Illustrator FX palette. And to further define all the details that I sculpted, I used Murder and Capillary from the Skin Illustrator Complexion palette. If you don't have these palettes, you can always use a cream makeup thinned down with alcohol. I have a video on how to do that, and I'll link it in the description. To attach the piece, I'm going to be using Pro's Aid, and what I like to do is paint a layer of the adhesive on the piece and let it dry. And also at this stage, I went ahead and added a blood tube because I'm going to be pumping blood through the wound. The tube will be held in place by the Pro's Aid, but I also added butterfly closure bandages to hold it in place. The next step I recommend is to apply a sweat retardant to the skin. This is going to be important especially with gelatin because gelatin will break down with heat and moisture. The product I used is from Mayron, it's called Skin Prep, and I found it on Amazon. Then I applied another layer of Prose to the skin and let it dry completely. Prose doesn't work unless it's dry, and you know it's dry when it's clear. My friend and makeup cohort Amanda helped me apply this piece. I do recommend having a friend help because they're an extra set of hands and eyes that can help you get the piece in place. After firmly pressing the piece down to ensure adhesion, we began gluing down the edges with more Prosaid and Q-tips. Amanda was invaluable at this point. She helped me get all the edges since I couldn't see all of them, especially on the sides of my neck. And I do want to give her a quick shout out on Instagram. Her name is Amanda Lee Artistry and she's pretty awesome. You might want to follow her. As you can see here, I also applied the separate forehead cut and glued those edges down. At this stage in the makeup, it's time to refine the edges. If your edges are thin enough, you can blend them down with warm witch hazel. We ended up having to use some Bondo, which is Prosade thickened with silica. And Amanda used a spatula to apply the Bondo to the problem edges, and then used a wet sponge to blend the Bondo down onto my skin. This step is going to eliminate the lip between the skin and the prosthetic. After powdering my edges, I started painting the gelatin to match my skin, and I stippled a color from Skin Illustrator called Rice Paper to the skin parts of the prosthetic. I'm using a brush by V. Neal called the Texture Number no. 3, and it's quickly become one of my favorite brushes. With a wound like this, irritation will occur around the edges, so I'm going to be replicating that with the color Light Mauve from the Skin Illustrator Complexion Palette. I'm lightly dabbing this color around the edges and blending it down into my skin tone. Next, I'm going to finish a detailed painting, including painting in the forehead cut and adding darker reds to the deeper parts of the wound. 
I wanted all the sculpted details to pop since it was a lot of work to sculpt, and I didn't want the wound to have a lot of dimension. For the bloods, I used Fleet Street Drying Bloods in Fresh and Dark. I wanted the bloods to dry and still look shiny. So Amanda also helped me with this part, and I think we had a little bit too much fun adding the blood. We did film this on a full moon after all. A tip for adding blood around the wound is to dab it on the area and then wipe it away with a baby wipe. It will diffuse the color and make it look more realistic. You can also spray the area with water as well. I did want to briefly chat about the blood tubing. I used a tube that I bought at Friends Beauty and a syringe to pump blood up through the tube, which made it look like the wound was bleeding. And the blood that I used was a mixture of corn syrup, cocoa powder, and food coloring. I do have a recipe on my channel if you're interested. And that, my friends, is how I recreated this makeup from American Werewolf in London. Huge thanks to Rick Baker for the inspiration and Amanda for convincing me to do this and helping along the way. Please help me out by giving this video a thumbs up. I don't think I've ever worked as hard on a tutorial as I have on this one, so a thumbs up helps me make more videos like this. You can also check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I will be posting like a madwoman in the coming months. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting. And remember, beware the moon, David. <laughs>